let's see we have an angle that goes one complete revolution. So in other words, it's going right back on itself. We've seen this before. We know that this angle is 360 degrees. Now what I want to focus on just for a moment is the arc length that was traveled around that circle. We've called that S before. So this arc length is equal to R times theta. Now since we went all the way around the circle, we could also equate this back to the circumference of the circle. If we went completely all the way around. Now recall, uh, circumference of a circle is found by doing 2 times pi times that radius. So if we equal all this together, that means that r times theta is equal to 2 pi r, so the radius is completely irrelevant. So this angle, 360 degrees, is the same thing as 2 pi. I remember if there's no unit here, in other words this is dimensionless, we assume this to be radians. I divide by 2, that means that 180 degrees would equal pi radians. So let's put that together in this coordinate plane. So again, if we start from standard position, we don't go anywhere, this would just be 0 radians. Then if we just saw a moment ago, full revolution is 2 pi radians. And then if we just saw a moment ago, if I go half of that, that would be 1 pi. So then between 0 and pi, half of that would be a half of a pi. And then between 1 pi and 2 pi would be 1 and a half pi. So using this picture, let's do a few examples of drawing angles and radians. So let's draw each angle. Let's say that theta is pi over 6. I remember that halfway is 1 full pi quarter of the way is a half of a pi, so a sixth of a pi is a lot smaller than that. So going basically a third of the quarter. So in other words, this is pi over six. Uh, let's say that theta is two pi over three. So again, one full revolution is two pi, so half a revolution is 1 pi, so if I want to go 2 thirds of this, that would give us our angle. Let's say that theta is 7 pi over 4. What I like to do is change this back into a mixed number. So 4 goes into 7 once with 3 left over. So really this is 1 and 3 quarters pi. Again, half a revolution is pi. So now I have to go 3 quarters more. Let's do one more. Let's say that theta is negative say 5 pi over 6. So again, half a revolution is pi. So if I'm going the other way, that would just be negative pi. So negative 5 sixths of a pi places us on the third quadrant.